so uh, can you explain little about the past signs of chaitanya mahaprabhu okay because well uh, <clears throat> to explain the past signs of chaitanya mahaprabhu krishna das kaviraj goswami there are two personalities who have written about chaitanya mahaprabhu one is the chaitanya bhagavata who has written chaitanya bhagavata anybody knows ha huh? Vrindavan Das Thakur. Vrindavan Das Thakur has written Chaitanya Bhagavata. And who has written Chaitanya Charitamrata? Krishna Das Kavaraj Goswami Maharaj. He has written Chaitanya Charitamrata. So these are the two very bona fide authorized books delineating the pastimes of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And uh, most of the uh, childhood and youth pastimes of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu are narrated in the Chaitanya Bhagavata. and whatever is not covered in the chaitanya bhagavata is covered by krishna das kaviraj goswami maharaj in chaitanya charitamrita so in the chaitanya charitamrita uh, he uh, krishna das kaviraj goswami states that it is the past times of chaitanya mahaprabhu are unlimited it is not possible to describe all the past times of chaitanya mahaprabhu but then he says i will try to describe whatever is possible to describe and he describes so if you want to know about the past times of chaitanya mahaprabhu it is not possible to sit here and talk about the leelas of chaitanya mahaprabhu in 10 minutes 15 minutes and all that so if you are interested really interested in understanding the past times of chaitanya mahaprabhu please read chaitanya charitamrita which sila prabhupad has uh, translated and that will give you a wonderful description of the past times of chaitanya mahaprabhu all the prominent an important leelas of chaitanya mahaprabhu are described there and what we have to understand is ultimately primarily uh, who is chaitanya mahaprabhu krishna varnam tusha krishnam sangopanga astra parshadam yajnaihi sankirtanaihi prayar ejantihi sumedakah this verse is from the 11th canto of the srimad bhagavata that in kali yuga the supreme lord krishna will incarnate in a hidden avatara channa avatara why do we say why do we say channa avatara or hidden avatara because every other incarnation of krishna he has openly declared himself to be the supreme personality of god whenever varaha dev descended or purma uh, descended or when uh, narsimha dev advented all the devatas came and glorified him you are the supreme personality of god and the lord also accepted when krishna came as chaitanya mahaprabhu anybody would come and tell chaitanya mahaprabhu chaitanya mahaprabhu you are krishna himself he would close his eyes vishnu 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 this is blasphemy nobody should compare a living entity to krishna like this he would never declare himself to be the supreme lord krishna himself so he came in a hidden avatara hidden incarnation and th- although he is krishna himself now the complexion of krishna is what he is shyama sundara he his complexion is like like that of the blackish rain bearing cloud you know when you see the rain bearing cloud it will be a dark uh, uh, blackish blue that is the color of krishna so that's why he is called shyama sundara he although his hue his complexion is blackish in this material world somebody is black complexion dark complexion he is not considered very beautiful of course today artificially people are all saying no this is all racist you know you should not look like that even uh, black people also should get miss uh, universe and all those kind of things but whatever you tell in the hearts of people what is it when they see a white person and they see a black person naturally your eyes will go to the white person you cannot help this this is not a matter of conditioning or simply artificially trying to educate people and say that no all are equal and all those kind of things. this is this is nature you cannot you cannot prevent this so when you say krishna is shyama krishna is blackish in complexion naturally the thinking comes oh so krishna is not so beautiful no krishna is shyama but he is shyama sundara his he is blackish in complexion but he is more beautiful than a million cupids put together so his blackish complexion 
is not like the dull black of this material world. It's a transcendental blackish blue. So the real beauty lies in the blackish blue complexion of Krishna. So although Krishna's complexion is Shyamasundara, but when Krishna comes as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Krishna, his complexion is Atrishna. It is not blackish in complexion. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's complexion is golden in complexion, like that of molten gold. So, Trisha Akrishnam Sango Panga Asra Parshadam. And whenever Krishna descends, he always descends in every avatara along with all his associates, Parshadas. So, when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu also came, all his associates came with him. Krishna came as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Balaram came as Nityananda Prabhu, Narada Muni came as Shiva Thakur, and uh, uh, all the other personalities, Devatas, all the Nanda Maharaj, Yashoda Mai, everybody also came as different personalities within the pastimes, to partake in the pastimes of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So, Sango Pangatra Parshanam, and not only that, Ednyai hi Sankirtanai hi Praye. He, as, as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he inaugurated the Sankirtana Yajna. Because every, uh, every incarnation of Krishna will have some specific, uh, uh, unique pastime by which you can identify, oh, this is that incarnation. Just like Ramachandra killed Ramana. Ramachandra performed so many pastimes. But the primary pastime of Ramachandra is killing Ramana. Similarly, if you look at uh, Narsamadev, primary pastime is vanquishing Hiranyakeshvara. Varahadev, primary pastime is rescuing Mother Earth, bringing her from the bottom of the ocean on the tusks. So like this, every pastime will have one specific uh, leela or pastime which characterizes that particular avatara. So, this avatara of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the primary pastime which characterizes Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is Ednyaihi Sankirtanai Praya. He will inaugurate the Sankirtana Yajna. That's what Chaitanya Mahaprabhu did. And Yajantihi Sumedasaha, Sumedasaha, those who are, those who are fine intelligence. Fine intelligence for what? Not for earning money, for economic development, for improving science and technology, for improving the, uh, communication science and improving the, the, the computer science, not that kind of brain. The brain and the intelligence to understand spiritual subject matter. So that is a very refined intelligence. So one, so because you can see, even the topmost tech brains in the whole world you take, you take the, the, the heads of those uh, tech institutions, whether you take Sundar Pichai or Satyana, Satya Nadala you take, you take Elon Musk, you take all the top corporate guys, the most brainy guys you take. And you ask them one simple question. Who are you? They will not know. They will not know. So, it's not enough to have that kind of intelligence, to be able to come out with new software and new products and, and iPad and iPhone and all these kind of things. It's not enough. That intelligence is a very gross intelligence. Why? Because we are dabbling with the gross material energy. So, the intelligence also is gross. But to understand spiritual subject matter, it is beyond even mind, intelligence and false ego. It is finer than even your subtle mind. So, how much finer intelligence is required to comprehend spiritual subject matter? That you are not the body, you are spirit soul, you have an existence independent of this body. It requires very fine intelligence. So, Sumedha Saha, those who are endowed with such fine intelligence in Kali Yuga, Yajanti Sumedha Saha, they will worship Chaitanya Mahaprabhu as Krishna himself. Those whose mind is not sufficiently, those whose intelligence is not sufficiently developed or refined enough, they will not be able to understand the Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. They will think he is also one sadhu, he started Bhakti movement, he was a great saint. That much only they can understand. But to understand that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is Krishna himself on the basis of the revealed scriptures which are giving the indication that he will inaugurate the Sankirtana Yajna and based on this we have to understand that this is Krishna himself. 
that requires refined intelligence. So, this in essence is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And if we see Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he conducted so many Leelas. But the primary Leela of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is spreading the Sankirtana Yajna. And that is why Krishna Das Kavraj Goswami also says in the Chaitanya Charitamrata, he says, Chiradadattam Nijagupta Vittam Svaprema uh, Svaprema Nama Amrita Atyudaraha. So, Chirad Adattam. Chirad for a long time. It, adattam, this gift was never given to the conditioned souls of this material world. Chirad Adattam Nijagupta Vittam. This is the personal, most confidential treasure of Krishna. What is this personal, confidential treasure of Krishna, which is so personal and so confidential to Krishna, that Chirad Adattam for a long time, he did not give it to anyone. What is that? Supreme and Hamamritam. Krishna's holy name and love of Krishna, Krishna Prema. Suprema Nama Amrita. The Amrita, the nectar of Krishna Prema and the nectar of the holy name of Krishna, the Hare Krishna Mantra, these two are the personal, most confidential treasures of Krishna. Nijagupta Vittam. This is the personal, confidential treasure of Krishna. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Ati Udaraha, he is very munificent. So what even Krishna did not do when he came 5000 years ago on this planet. Krishna personally came, he did so many leelas and he even gave the knowledge of the Bhagavad Gita. But he did not give Svaprema Nama Amrita. He did not give Krishna Prema and he did not give his holy name. That Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Adi Udaraha, extremely munificent, he came and distributed freely. Apamaram yo vitatara. Gaura Krishna Janebhyo. So, so that Gaura Krishna, that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, whose complexion is the uh, golden complexion, Gauraha Krishna, Janebhyo for all the people, Apamara, Apamaram yo vitatara. Even to the most fallen conditioned souls, he distributed freely. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu did not consider this person is qualified, this person is a great devotee, so I will give to him, this person is not qualified, I will not give to him, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu did not consider. Even to Jagai and Madhai, he gave the holy name. Not only Jagai and Madhai, even to people like the uh, uh, Chand Kazi, the Nawab, he is a Muslim magistrate, to him also he gave. Krishna gave, uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gave his holy name and love of Krishna. So you see, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, without any consideration, qualification, unqualified, disqualified, Hindu, Muslim, nothing, openly, anybody and everybody he gave the holy name Hare Krishna Mahamantra and Krishna Prema. So this is the pastime, primary pastime of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, distributing the holy name Hare Krishna Mantra through the Sankirtana Yajna and also distributing Krishna Prema. So, uh, the pastimes of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu are unlimited, like the waves of the ocean. It is not possible to describe all of them. If you are interested, so keen on knowing the pastimes of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, please read the Chaitanya Chaitamrita, which has been translated and uh, beautiful purports have been given by Srila Prabhupada and which will give us a full, clear understanding of the pastimes of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu.